Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing very well. So in today's video, we are going to see the interview experience of IBM. In this video, we are going to cover the technical round questions as well as the HR round questions. As you might already know that in the IBM interview, there are two rounds that is HR and TR. In most of the cases, HR and TR happens in the same round. That is, there will be two interviewers who will take your HR as well as TR round. So let's start with this video and in this video we are going to discuss the complete details. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We have already uploaded one video which is part one which is related to IBM interview experience. You will get the link in the description. If you have not checked that video, please check that video also. So let's start with the video. So the first question is, what is variable scope? A scope is a region of the program and broadly speaking, there are three places where variables can be declared inside a function or a block, which is called local variables in the definition of function parameters, which is called formal parameters outside of functions, which are called global variables. So uh, this, this is the three places where the variables can be declared that is called as the scope of a variable. Moving on to the next question, what is the condition of deadlock? Deadlock can exist if and only if four conditions hold simultaneously. That is, if all of these four conditions are uh, satisfied simultaneously, then only the condition of deadlock will exist. Let's see what all are the four conditions. That first one is mutual exclusion. At least one process must be held in a non-shareable mode. Hold and wait. There must be process holding one resource and waiting for another. No preemption, resources cannot be preempted, circular weight, there must exist a set of processes. So these are the four conditions. You do not need to explain all these four processes in your interview. If you name these also, that will be more than sufficient. And uh, while answering, make note of it in mind that you don't have to stretch your answer more than 30 seconds. If the interviewer wants you to speak more, he will ask you, but don't stretch your answer too long. Moving ahead to the next question. What does object oriented database management means that is OODBMS an object oriented database management system is a database management system that supports the creation and modeling of data as objects OODBMS also includes supports for classes of objects and inheritance of class properties and incorporates methods subclasses and their objects. So this is what is meant by OODBMS moving ahead to the next question. What is the string? In programming, a string is a contiguous sequence of symbols or values such as character strings, a sequence of characters or binary strings, a string of binary values. So this is what meant by strings. So if you are from non IT background, you might not get these kinds of questions which are related to which are more related to IT, but you have to be prepared for the best. That is why we are covering the most important questions. So moving on to the next question. What is an array? What is the importance of an array? An array is a data structure that contains group of elements. Regularly, these elements are of same data type such as integer or string. Array are commonly used in the computer program to organize data so that a related set of values can be easily sorted or searched. What is the importance of arrays? So the first importance is it is better and convenient way of storing data of the same data type with the same size. Next importance is it allows users to store a number of elements in it. So basic questions on data structures you can expect like uh, arrays, linked list, vectors, uh, trees, graphs and all of these. So you have to understand each or you have to prepare a one paragraph answer for all these basic data structures if you already do not know about them. Moving on to the next question, explain inheritance. Again, as already we have discussed in the last video also that OOPS is a very important concept and uh, the topics related to OOPS will be definitely asked to you uh, in your interviews. So let's see one more concept of OOPS, which is inheritance. So the question is explain inheritance. The answer for this can be the ability of a class to derive features and traits from another class is referred to as inheritance. Inheritance is one of the most important features of object oriented programming. Subclasses and derived classes are classes that inherit the properties from another class. A superclass or base class is the class whose properties and member functions are inherited by other classes. The concept of reusability is supported through inheritance and it is one of the main advantage of inheritance. Consider a group 
so this is the real life example you can also give this example so it will give a positive impact on the interviewer that you even know the real life applications of different concepts so consider a group the vehicle has all of the basic features that some that a vehicle must have this covers the things like speeding up braking shifting gears and so forth assume that the class is car bus truck and so on exist because of all these classes must essentially possess of all of the features of the class vehicle they can all be considered as sub classes for it so this is a real life example for it moving on to the next question explain encapsulation again another important concept of oops before looking at the answer for this question if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe to the channel as you can get regular updates related to the off campus drives as well as preparation related videos on our channel you can also check the playlist section of our channel to see more such videos let's see the answer for this question in object oriented programming encapsulation is defined as the binding of data and functions that alter it encapsulation means that a classes variables or data are hidden from other classes and can only be accessed through member functions of the class in which they are declared so consider the following situation there are various divisions in a corporation such as accounts finance sales and so on like there are different departments right the finance department's job is to maintain track of all the inform financial information and transactions similarly it is the responsibility of the sales department to maintain the track of all the sales related activity let's pretend that a finance department's official requests sales statistics for a given month he cannot directly access the data in the sales area in this circumstance because only a sales department official has the access to sales data he must con he must be contacted who must be contacted the sales department person encapsulation is depicted here by the process of requesting sales representative for data the data from the sales department as well as the person who can affect it are grouped under the heading sales section so if any other department that is like the finance department person needs the data for sales department he must have to contact the person from the sales department so the this implies the concept of encapsulation moving ahead to the next question explain polymorphism it describes the existence of numerous versions of anything in some simpler words polymorphism refers to a message ability to be displayed in numerous ways a person might for example have a range of features at the same time he is a father a husband and a worker all at the same time as a result the same person acts differently depending on the situation this is known as polymorphism that is it has many forms poly means many and morphism means forms in c++ there are primarily two types of polymorphism these are defined as follows that is the compile time polymorphism and the runtime polymorphism in compile time polymorphism uh, this type of polymorphism is achieved by overloading the functions and operators whereas runtime polymorphism this type of polymorphism is created only by using the function overriding so this is this was the entire concept about polymorphism so we are discussing in detail or a long answer for these questions you need not need to uh, like remember all of the details you need to understand the main topics that is what is meant by polymorphism and that will be more than sufficient you don't have to answer in detail because i have already told you you don't have to stretch your answer too long 30 to 40 second answer is more than sufficient so next concept is abstraction explain abstraction it gives only the most important elements while keeping the rest hidden data abstraction is the process of revealing only the most significant aspects of data set to the outside world while keeping the implementation details hidden consider the situation of a man driving a car the man only knows that the that pressing the accelerators increases the vehicle's speed and that applying the brakes stops it but he has no understanding of how the speed is increased or how the accelerator brakes and other tools are implemented in the car this is how abstraction is defined so this is a very good real life example that we as a driver do not know what is the insides of how the brake works or, or how the connections are made between the different parts of a vehicle so we only need the data that is important to us so that is only visible to us and we only need to learn those concepts so this is what about abstraction moving on to the next question now we are going to see some of the hr related questions so we, till now we have seen the technical questions and now let's see that hr related questions what distinguish hard work from smart work because you can't become a better at anything if you don't practice it putting it plenty of hard work is an absolute need in your life so this is one of the answers you can answer it accordingly you don't have to give this specific answer 
I would suggest you to give your own answers. I have just taken some of the uh, sample questions so that you will have an idea what kind of questions that you can get in your IBM interview in HR round. Moving on to the next question, who has been your inspiration and why? My father is a source of motivation for me since he has constantly shown how one can go from having nothing to having everything. He has always been there to direct me in the right direction so that I may achieve success in all the aspects of my life. So again, uh, these kinds of questions are very regularly asked. All of these questions are asked to see your thinking approach, how well you think and to see your body language and your confidence level. So even though if you do not know the answer, I would suggest you to not stammer in between. Try to give confidence answer and make the interview look that you are very confident. Even though if you do not know answer, it doesn't matter because in interview is all about confidence if you give your con if you are giving your answers with your confidence 90 percent of the work is done moving on to the next question from 1 to 10 how would you evaluate me as an interviewer you have more knowledge more skill and more life experience than i have i don't feel qualified to pass judgment on you so if you get such kind of question in your interview always do not try to give ranking in the first go try to say these kinds of statement that i don't feel qualified to pass a judgment on you or to judge you but even if even after this after saying this they force you to give the rating you can give a rating uh, like 8 9 or as per your, your avail, uh, feasibility but never give a rating or judge uh, the interviewer in the first go moving ahead to the next question in five years where do you see yourself again this is a very frequently and most commonly asked question so you can answer it like this i can foresee myself progressing within this firm and achieving a position in which i become an invaluable contributor to this organization at some point in the future again these kinds of question may require you to speak more so you can take up to one minute of time to speak the answer for this question totally depends on the interviewer if he wants you to speak uh, short answer they can interpret in between and if they want the, if they want that the your answer is too short they can ask you to speak more so accordingly you can answer so i would suggest you to always prepare beforehand uh, related to all these hr questions answers related to all these hr questions so if you do not know you can check the playlist section of my channel i have uploaded several videos related to hr questions next question is what are your aims my immediate objective is to find a position within your firm and my long term objective is to achieve success in all the aspect of this organization's operations. So this shows that you are very much interested for the profile which you are applying for and you are uh, looking forward to join this position. So always answer in this way. So with this we have covered the second part of the interview experience of IBM. If you have not checked the first part make sure to check that uh, I will attach the link in the description box. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comment section. If you want me to make more videos related to any specific topics, topics, please let me know in the comment section and I will bring that video to you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel to receive all the regular updates. I regularly upload off-campus drives as well as placement related videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and all the best for your upcoming interview. If you have not followed us on Instagram yet, please follow as we regularly post updates on our Instagram channel. You can also ask your doubts in the DM section. Also, if you have not yet subscribed to our Telegram channel, please go ahead and subscribe to it. You will get all the relevant links in the description box.